Well, Whitey, we got the ladies this week on Top Star Bowling. Jack, and you'd be surprised how these women can bowl, and I know we've seen some good matches on Top Star, but where do you see this? Hi, welcome to Top Star Bowling. I'm Jack Buck. I'll be joining Whitey Harrison's side, and we're hoping that you'll be joining us here at the Marlboro Lanes, featuring the ladies this week on Top Star Bowling. Welcome to Top Star Bowling. I'm Jack Buck. I'll be introducing Whitey Harris further in just a moment. And this is a match that a lot of us have been waiting for. We're featuring the gals this week, and we have two of the very, very best. Let me tell you that we're at the Marlboro Lanes in the village of Marlboro, southwest of the city of St. Louis, commonly called the Gateway to the West. And we have two young ladies, and I know you know of both of them. They're bowling a three-game match. Total pins count $1,000 to the winner, and $500 to the loser on our feature match. We had the men last week, the men next week, but as I say, this is one that a lot of us have been waiting for. We have a fine gathering on hand. We're happy that you tuned in. Let's greet the gal who is annually the Bowler of the Year and almost annually the winner of the BPA All-Star Tournament from Grand Rapids, Michigan, Marion Lattowie. See you. Thank you, Jack. Good to see you. Always a pleasure to have you here, and I know you're going to reward us with some of your fine bowling. Let's meet Marion's opponent, a youngster from Kansas City, a gal whom uh, Marion defeated in the world's invitation. How could you do that to a little girl like that, Marion? Wasn't easy. <laughs> She's a good one, isn't she? <laughs> Terrific. And she beat you <laughs> shortly after in a tournament in Madison Square Garden. That's right. So uh, we've got a little evening up or getting ahead or however you want to refer to it to be accomplished here in this session. Let's meet this young lady from Kansas City. Started bowling at the age of four. And that was only a couple of years ago for Judy Audsley. <laughs> Judy, good to see you. Good to see you. You have five grandchildren. Yes, I have. None this old, Marion, huh? Two bowlers, though. Oh, yes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not married? No. The stage so is... I don't have any grandchildren. <laughs> I thought better of it, but you didn't, right? <laughs> Well, I know that both of you girls are primed and ready to go, having practiced on the lanes, and so with a handshake, away we'll go, and I know we'll all enjoy watching Marion Latterwig and Judy Audsley. Thank you. Good luck to you. <laughs> Three games, total pins, here on Top Star Bowling. The youngster, Judy Audsley, is our leadoff bowler. Here we go. She's on lane 21. Look at the way she goes to that line. And a bit on the nose. Leaves the 4 7. I think that was one of her slow pitches, Jack. She's not warmed up yet. This young gal was the Kansas City match game champion at age 16. Learned a bowl from her dad. And she gets the 4 7 for the square. She came pretty close to uh, not covering that one here at the outset. Now, Marion Ladder, we got lane 22, and you're going to see a contrast in styles here at the Marlboro Lanes. And before I go any further, let me tell you that this event is sanctioned by the WIBC, the Women's International Bowling Congress. The lanes are certified by ABC. Marion is on the nose. She didn't get away quite as well as Judy did as she leaves the 6-7. Marion from Grand Rapids, Michigan, Judy Oddsley from Kansas City. Alongside me at the microphone, Jerome Whitey Harris, a member of the Brunswick Advisory Staff of Champions. You'll be hearing and is enjoying his comments as we go along. And she gets the nine count. Did it appear, Whitey, that she was trying to uh, pick that split or just go on for the pin? No, I... I think probably Marion was trying to pick the split jack, but at this time of the game, it's so early, uh, they'll gamble on the split. Now, later on, where pins really mean something, why she'd go for that one pin. Now Marion moves over to lane 21. 
then hit almost carries a seven pin remains. I mentioned at the outset that Marion has been the BPAA All-Star champion so many times that you can't enumerate the years. Won the World's Invitational quite a few times. Woman Bowler of the Year so often. Michigan's Woman Athlete of the Year. And she gets her first mark. Judy applauds her for getting that spare. On a show like this, uh, even though they are competing for a lot of money, 1,000 to the winner and 500 to the loser, why uh, all of the performers, men and women alike, like to see even their opponents do well, bowl well, score well. And the 8-10, the ball wasn't quite uh, turning for her. Why do you could actually see that one and almost expected something of this sort? I think she realized it too because when she turned around, Jack, it looked as though she looked down maybe to check where she had been at the foul line. It's very important to what area these bowlers get when they get up to the line. She evidently wasn't close enough to that line. So this is going to even it up pretty much. Yeah, as Judy gets the eighth in. She's a little uh, cutie, a very personable gal. You recall interviewing her one time? Uh huh. A year ago. She was featured on Top Star Bowling last year. She's down the nose and leaves another split, this time the 310. Do they both bowl a uh, full size bowling ball, Whitey? Yes, and uh, that you mean by the weight, don't you, Jack? Yes. Uh, uh -huh. 16 pounds, yeah. Here we'll see Judy shooting for the 310, and like all bowlers should do, she's to the left on the approach, Jack. She'll try to go between the 3 and the 10. And you got it. She has 27 through the second with a spare up. I'm hot this week. I called that one. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was going to uh, drop behind there if she failed to convert that split. It would have been two in a row. Yeah. Marion again almost carried over there and leaves the seven pin just as she had done in the previous frame. Last week on Top Star Bowling, we saw Ray Bluth beat Steve Nagy with a 626 series. And so a little uh, time off for Ray and he'll be coming back to take on Wayne Zahn next week on Top Star Bowling. Marion covers the seven pin. Say, there's that uh, young lady who turns out for all of these matches, Whitey, and she even showed up to watch the gal, so I know now that she is a true bowling enthusiast. Yes, I imagine so, Jack, because definitely she, that's what she's here for, and she's seeing some real good bowling, too. We've had no strikes as yet. And Marion leaves the 4-6. So that is her second split. The best game that uh, Marion has bowled, a 290. She has had a 742 series. She has averaged 204 in league play. And she gets a nine count again. She started with an open, then two spares, another open. She has 55 through the fourth. Took a Brooklyn to give us our first strike of the game. Boy, she was right over that uh, center arrow, I think. She think really goes up there in a hurry, doesn't she? Uh, well, that's. Uh, I think she has to have a fast approach, Jack, because she's so small, and they get that full swing of that ball and really put it out there. I know I'll never be able to bowl as well as she. I just wish I could run as fast as she can run. <laughs> and the four pin keeps her from getting the double. Judy is in the fifth frame. The lanes here at uh, Marlboro are sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress. And as I indicated, the appearance on the part of the gals in Top Star Bowling is sanctioned by the WIBC. $1,500 in prize money involved in this special. 1000 to the winner, 500 to the loser. And she ran right by it and knew she was going to do it. And so she opens, and each has two opens. That can happen, Jack, when it's just a matter of being a little bit too overconfident. She uh, just threw that ball out there. You got to work on these spares just as well as you do on that first ball. Fifth frame for Marion Lederweg. High backswing. 
And she leaves a two-pin. Has an unusually high backswing for a lady bowler, Whitey. Yes, and uh, we'll know, Jack, that when she's up there again, we've commented at different times. Marion also takes a good look at the ball to see how it's positioned in her hand. Just glances down. There's her spare in the fifth frame. So Judy Oddsley opened in the fifth and has a total of 74. And Marion Latterwig has a spare in the fifth, 55 through the fourth. Still cannot find that strike. Yes, Laverne Carter and uh, Joy Abel are also featured bowlers on Top Star Bowling. Now, Marion will despair. So Marion is uh, 74 through the fifth, Judy 75. So Judy has a one pin lead as she bowls in the sixth. How's that for a ball? And were it not for that four pin in the fifth frame, I, the younger one would have three in a row. Marion is uh, very proud of the fact that she is grandmother of five. I thought that thing hit Mike Carey, and I bet you did too as you watched it. So there's the first double of the game. Would you say that's quite an infectious grin as she comes back after a double, Jack? Yes, yeah, she did. These strikes can really make you feel happy, but we'll see if Marion accepts the challenge and puts one in there herself. comes away with another split to 410 this time. And that is her third split of this game. You know, you talk about the grin on the part of Judy when she got the strike, and that's the joy of bowling for the ladies, no matter what their circumstance in life might be. The, the mother who is uh, stuck at home with the kids most of the day. Or the working gal who has to put in that five-day week or the six-day week. Very few opportunities for Leisure time, entertainment. That's where bowling fits so very nicely into the picture. Mother and daughter get togethers. Atta girl, Marion. She bounced right back from that split with a big strike in the eighth. And now Judy Odsley goes up there looking for three. I'd like to pass a word more about mothers and daughters bowling along to you. To organize a mother and daughter group in your area, contact your bowling proprietor. He knows how to do it, and he'd be very happy to do it. Look at her run to that line. Yeah. Didn't carry the five pin. Pretty much the same thin hit that got her the strike previously on 21. She had good mix in action, Jack. This time, I just did take the ball back. It didn't take that five pin out. She wasn't grinning this time. She was grim. Shug grim. Five pin goes down. You notice how long she stared at the path of the ball. She'll make use of the information gleaned from that pitch to. Jack, all the bowlers, they, are, they were asked a lot of times, when they're holding their hand above that terminal, they're using the Brunswick hand dryer to dry off their hand. I know I, people are always asking, what are they doing there? This is the ninth frame, and it leaves the 310 for the second time. She converted it in the third frame. Ninth frame for Judy. She has had two opens, a split and a miss. Marion has had three, all on splits. Let's see if Judy can cover this twice in one game. Nope. There's a nine count, so she opens in the ninth, and neither is getting off to a very auspicious beginning. 151 through the ninth for Judy. 
Now, if Mary wants to catch her, she has to make use of that strike she has working in the eighth. Just give her a little opening. After a 6-7 split, a 4-6, and a 4-10, Marion gets rid of one of those opens with a double, closes the gap. And as a result of Judy She's studying having Jack. opened in the ninth. She's studying up there. Marion in the 10th frame, looking for three in a row. And that is her fourth split. She didn't quite get to the line properly. She could have had a respectable total with it all up until this one. She could have totaled 191 if she could have struck out. Goes after the four pin, gets a field goal instead, and Marion ends with 155. So whatever get, Judy gets here in the 10th frame will pretty much indicate the pin difference. What in the world is going on? It's going to be a close one when it's over. She had a split in the ninth, and so with this split, she's going to end up with 160 most likely and a five pin lead. Goes for the six, trying to get a little action out of it. Almost good. What are you looking back up here for? <laughs> Judy Oddsley in the first game, 160. And Marion Ladderweek, 155. Well, at the end of the first game, Marion Ladderweek is ahead. Four splits to three. <laughs> and Judy, of course, has had one additional open with a miss. Hence the reason for the closeness of the score, 160 to 155. Both gals have voted to start over, but we're not going to let them do it. We're going to make them bowl 600 with this first game as a handicap. Let's watch the second game here on Top Star Bowling. I don't know if you want if we ever get it. Now let's see how Marion Ladderwig starts here in the second game. Flora, four splits held her down to 155 in our opener. Just did get to the head pin, leaves the 2 5. I'm sure that the pressure of a relatively poor game will not affect Marion's work one bit. She'll come back like the champion she is, and that is easily predicted. There's the 2 5 covered for the mark. See Judy applauding her. Even though uh, Marion's after the $1,000, Judy wants to see her do well. Yes. I'm certain it applies in reverse. Right up until now. When Judy gets up on that approach, she wants to win, Jack. <laughs> She's left the five pin before. Indication that her ball isn't uh, driving through there for her. In the All-Star Finals, 33 games, not too far back, Judy averaged over 194. And then in a 48-game World's Invitational Final, she averaged over 196. So they each spare in the first frame of our second game. Jack, for her size, she stands almost at the end of the approach. That's where she builds up a lot of her speed by taking the Five steps. Whoa! You can't hit him any better than that. She doesn't seem to be easily disturbed by the transpirings out there. Oh, but inwardly, I bet she's burning. I don't think so. <laughs> you can't grin like that and be burning up inside. I've seen you sometimes do that. a different kind of a grin. She grinned, but not really. Jack, she almost should have, uh, because she missed a pin over there, the four pin in the first game, on that same lane. So it was just a matter of misjudging uh, on her part. 
Marion Lattery gets on a strike in the second frame. Both of these ladies are quite petite. Nonetheless, able to stand the grueling grind of prolonged bowling tournaments. And she leaves the bucket, the 2458. You've been to a bowling center lately on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon? Even if you don't bowl, you can have a lot of fun watching the youngsters. One more reason why bowling's so great. Even the youngsters get in on the fun. A great family sport is bowling. Let's see if Marion can cover all four of these. Yep. So the bucket didn't hurt her too much in as much as she had a strike working for her. So she has 40 through the second with a spare. She has overcome the five pin deficit with which she started, taking the lead. Judy Odsley with a spare, then a miss. Does a little getaway. Leaves a six pin. Jack, uh, seated there behind the score is Mrs. Audsley, who has been responsible, I guess, in a sense, for Judy getting where she is because they had a bowling lane in Kansas City, and that's uh, she taught her when Judy was uh, coming up at the age of four, like you mentioned. And it would be difficult for a uh, young girl to do all of the traveling and do all of the competing in the tournaments without the cooperation of some very cooperative parents. So Judy has profited from that. You keep messing around with the head pin, you get a few getaways as Judy profited from in the third, but not here in the fourth. Four, six, ten. Judy had three strikes in the first game, and uh, Marion had only two. But Marion has the only strike in this one, and Judy threw that one away. She's getting a little regusted with herself. She'll do something about it. It, but didn't get the strike. She had a spare up in the third. This is the fourth frame for her. I imagine, uh, Whitey, with regard to Miss Audsley, her approach is so rapid and her delivery is so strong that she has to be right on line in order to score well. Very little margin for error. That's right, Jack. And uh, of course, she, yes, she's she's young and she's improving in competitive bowling. I think she'll probably end up where she will be. Uh, her approach will be a little bit more slower. She hits a lot of strikes right into the bugle, chases them over the Brooklyn at different times. But this is like anyone that's coming up. They're a little wild, erratic at different times, it's through inexperience. This is the fifth frame for Marion. Beautifully in the back of that time with her second strike of the game giving her a total of 79 through the fourth with a strike. I bet the young gal has a lot of people rooting for her now in the audience and those who are viewing on TV. She keeps firing at that, uh, that head pin, Whitey. I, like I said before, Jack, this is her style of bowling, and if uh, she can just, if she's a margin off, we've talked about matter of inches in games. Well, this is what's happened here. She's just off of a sixteenth of an inch, and that's what's throwing that ball into the snoot. <laughs> it came pretty close, didn't she? Well, she's smiling again, anyhow. So through the fifth, Beauty has 61. Marion has 79 through the fourth with a strike. Three opens in the first five frames. a girl. Hey. <laughs> that was
almost feel like you're watching your daughter out there bowl, don't you? Well, Jack, I think some of the reasons why she glances up here, we've taken Judy out on our some of our learn to bowl clinics and getting her involved more in instructors classes. So we kid her a lot with her because if she's an instructor, she's got to bowl good. And I guess she's thinking of that now, what's happening to her game. There's a double for Marion Ladaway. And Judy uh, knows as well as anybody else that she better not allow her opponent to get too far out in front. Marion has 79 through the fourth, now with a double, looking for three, bowling in the seventh frame. We're in the second game. Judy won the first game by five pins. Oh, whoop. Could well have had three, but didn't get it. Perhaps Judy can double when she comes up there in the seventh. She doubled in the sixth and seventh in the first game, by the way. Marion uh, takes the four steps, Jack, and this is what she teaches in a lot of her courses for the average bowler going to the foul line. There's her spare in the seventh frame. So Judy Audley has 61 through the fifth with a strike. Marion Ladewig has 128 through the sixth with a spare. Judy Audsley is up in the seventh frame and she has a strike working. She direly needs one here. May well have it. And the seven went down. She's going to have to shoot only at the five pin. But I imagine she's disappointed that she didn't carry the five. That's pretty good hit, Whitey. The ball just didn't finish for her. Just didn't kick it out. There's no explanation for it, Jack. Looked like it was rolling well. Seventh frame, so trying to come back on the strike. And this will give her 81 through the sixth. Each has a spare in the seventh. Marion is 47 pins ahead in this game and 42 overall in the match. Trying to get on a strike again. And leaves a 1-2-4. So seven count on that spare she had working. Judy Oddsley from Kansas City. And she got the spare. Makes you feel old, Whitey, when you look down and see that Judy was born in June of 1944, doesn't it? Makes me look old when I look down when Marion Ladwig was born. Marion has a spare working. She's in the eighth frame. And leaves the 2-5. But, uh, Actually, you're true, Jack. There's such a great uh, movement of the younger bowlers reaching this point of being so uh, good. I think uh, sometime on Top Star Bowling, people have opportunities to see someone like Ted Huffman Jr. from Philadelphia. And uh, this is going on all over. So the oldsters, uh, if I may use that phrase, have to continually look to their laurels. She has 146 through the seventh with a spare. Judy has 98 through the seventh with a spare. Now the important ninth frame. Marion has had three strikes in this game. I think, uh, I don't know, this may be just, maybe a false impression. They'll seem a bit timid after the uh, many strikes they encountered. Hesitant to throw uh, at that head pin. Think that could be? I don't know unless uh, maybe the way they figure these things out, Jack, they weren't too sure of the strike they got or the ball they threw. Marion has been very accurate on the spares, and the misses have hurt uh, Judy. She missed a four pin in the first game, and she missed a seven pin in the second. I'll get to it after a while, Jack. It's just something about Marion. All right. Here's Judy in the ninth. And a girl. There's her ball right there. It's only her second strike. She had but three in the first game. Now she'd like to strike it out. She's in the roll off right now. Could end with 178. Marion Ladewig's gonna be ahead at the end of the second game, no matter. And couldn't get the double, 4-7. 
storytelling time on Judy Jack when she was about nine years old. Buzz Fazio, who you'll see on Top Star Bowling, went to uh, their bowling lanes in Kansas City to bowl a match. So they couldn't find anybody to bowl anything. So Mr. Don't Audley, tell me. Mr. Audley, Audley said, uh, I had she a took stop, the ball Jack. Right off that seven. She's, it's a shame to continue his story because of that miss there. But anyway, Mr. Audley said, well, how about bowling this little girl here? And the surprising thing about it, at nine years old, in one single game, she beat Buzz Fazio in this exhibition. Marion leaves the seventh pin as Judy ends with 146. So she started with 160, and everybody figured she'd get better, and said it was 146 in the second game. Well, not alibi, Jack, but uh, women are have don't have the opportunities of participating, we'll say, on television shows as much as the fellas do. There's a spare for Marion. So she's going to be over the 200 mark with a worthwhile hit here. So the point I'm getting to is that this is probably Judy, I guess, if it's been once or twice that she's ever been under the lights or in a condition like this, which is altogether different when they roll these long, you know, the long matches. Marion ends with 203. In the second game, Judy Odsley rolled 146 for a 306 total. Marianne Latterwig had a worthwhile 202 and a total of 357. Before Marion and Judy determine the winner on this week's Top Star Bowling, and before we go into our third and final game, we can't uh, bowl here in St. Louis and film Top Star Bowling without introducing some of the fine baseball personalities that we have. And we have one here for you now, one of the greatest second basemen of the game of baseball has ever known, Albert Red Shandy. How you doing, Red? All real good, Jack. These gals really knock them down, I, don't they? I'll tell you one thing. I'd start another career. I'd go to pitching if I could throw a baseball the way they throw a curve on this uh, bowling ball. If you had that big hook going for you. Well, huh? I'd, I'd, I'd be a winner. You're not a bad bowler. I've seen you bowl. You could get next to this game if you spend a little more time, huh? Well, I bowl quite a bit in the wintertime. In the summertime, I don't get too much time. Of course, when we're on the road, I get out a, a few times. You know, there are a lot of uh, ball players are good bowlers. Roy Sievers, Frank Bauman. Who are some of the others? Well, very good. Charlie Deering. And uh, we have a number of them here in St. Louis, which we uh, uh, do pretty good. We always could beat the press and radio here in St. Louis. Uh, hey, <laughs> he's talking about an annual event we have here. Red, uh, continue to enjoy the match. I know you've enjoyed it so far. We wanted the people here to meet you and the, those who tune in to Top Star Bowling. Good luck in your bowling venture and continued success in your fine baseball career. Jack, and good luck to the girls here. Red Chaney and Stagettes. And now, even more excitement on Top Star Bowling, the third and final game, Marion Ladewig and Judy Audsley. Judy Audsley leads things off in the third game. And come on, five pin. <laughs> Jack, that, that five pin is waving, and uh, of course, when the automatic comes down and touches it, that's it. It has must be replaced, and that's what happened. Replaced it back on the spot, and it's still waving. It actually looked like that five pin was lodged between two others. But we're down, and it just couldn't fall. I think you're right. That's what actually happened. Well, if you didn't already know things were going badly with a 160 and a 146, well, that should have proven the point to and now Marion Ladewig, who came on with a 202 second game, crosses over and leaves the 610. Jack, usually when Marion's in competition, there's always a familiar cry comes out of the stands. That a that a gal. And of course, this is Bill Morrissey, who actually coached Marion through the many years that she has gone on to a lot of championships. Bill Morrissey, he's from around Grand Rapids. Marion going for the 6-10 in the spare. <laughs> Miss Ladewig, 51 pins ahead at the start of the third game. Now each has a spare in the first frame. Marion had 
three strikes in the second game. We're down to Brooklyn and gets a strike. And she'll take it. Next week on Top Star Bowling, it'll be Ray Bluth against Wayne Zahn. And more trouble for the youngster. Four six confronts her. And Sodsley had two splits and two misses in the second game. Takes down the six pin. And she had four splits in the first game, two in the second, and one here. I think Jack, where well, you probably will you be talking to. Marion and Judy after this match. Mm -hmm. uh, I bet if you would ask Judy just how her feeling is on this, it, she'd be honest with you. Being it's one of her very rare times that she, she's been exposed to a television. And now the 810, indicating a pretty good hit. Not alibying for these bowlers that you see on Top Star Bowling, but uh, I don't think there's many bowlers can come up here with everything that's around here, the atmosphere plus shooting for the the money that they can get up there and bowl their natural game, no matter if they are pros. Well, another nine count for Judy, who has eight splits in the match so far. And Mary Matterwig has a strike. And being the pro-type bowler that she is, she's not going to let up one bit, regardless of the score. Right. Over they go for a double. <clears throat> Marion wants to uh, protect her own reputation, of course, and and with a worthwhile total. She has 357 at the end of two games. I forget, once in an interview, you asked her if she thought she'd like to bowl in, in competition against, against men. Mm -hmm. Well, being as I belong to that sex, I should I say no to the way this gal can bowl. Leaves the 2-5. She was going for three. Marion started this game 51 pins ahead, and that is has added to that advantage. She and Laverne Carter oftentimes team up in doubles events around the country. How about that 2 5? She's very accurate on those stairs. Now, Judy is up again. And I know that she can't help but be wondering as she gets ready to roll in the fourth frame. I'm wondering what in the world is going to happen now, but I just keep firing and see what happens. <laughs> Boy, it can't get any worse. Perfect hits in the 10 pin. Just barely touched by that six. Little lesson for the viewers. While Judy will stand to the left on the approach, whenever you're shooting for a 10 pin, you should be on the left side and go across the lane and walk directly towards the pin or in the area of the pin to the left. And she gets the 10 pin. She has uh, already at a very early age acquired quite a style of bowling, a very fine bowling form. And as Whitey told you, she is still in the process of learning. She has a lot of years ahead of her in this sport. That a girl. <laughs> now, if it hadn't been for that 10, then that would have been a double. But and the 8-10 right before that, Jack. So she, their last three pitches have been pretty good, right in the pocket. Marion has a spare, a double, a spare as she bowls in the fifth frame. Pretty much on the nose, left the seven pin. Jack, I don't think we've had a chance to actually see how the Brunswick A2 automatic and the return works. I think this will be a good chance after Marion throws her ball to see how she lines up on the other approach and see if that ball does return in that time. She throws at the seven pin, takes it down. So Judy Audsley has 56 through the fourth with a strike. And Marion Latterwig has 87 through the fourth with a spare. Come back pretty fast. <laughs> and quite a 
a bomb that time. She's applauded by uh, Judy Ogsley for that hit. That was the third strike of this game for Marion. She had three in the second game. Started with only two in the first and didn't get a strike until the eighth frame of the first game. So neither lady has really been very much at home in this session. Now a four pin. And as we indicated, the youngster could very well have four in a row. Left the eight ten, a solid ten. Got a strike in the fifth, and now a four pin with that good hit which we just saw. She was really bearing down on that four pin. She had missed it earlier in this match, you know, and so she stayed with that one all the way. We're at the Marlboro Lanes. Our top star bowling is taking place. Four seven. Not a good hit that time. At age 18, this young lady at whom you're looking was runner-up in the world's invitational. And her opponent here is the gal who beat her. And another spare. Looks like she looks over at Laverne for some advice. I mean, not Laverne, I'm thinking of someone else, but uh, of Marion. When Judy comes back, she always looks at Marion. Now the 610. I think you hit it on the head before, Jack, when you commented. And I, I don't know how many times that I've had an opportunity to see Marion bowl and win her championships. But her percentage of picking spares must be tremendous over the, I'm speaking of years. And this is probably what has aided her more in a lot of the close matches. Well, you almost talked her into one right there, didn't you? I really call them. That's me. Over the uh, over the period of weeks, quite a few of our men bowlers have had difficulty on the right side of the lane with that ten pin and the six ten. And the two five is always a treacherous one in the bucket. You just got to knock them down. That's all there is to it. There's a fine strike by Marion Latterwig in the eighth frame. She's had four strikes. Now Judy is up in the eighth. Dear, I'd like to see her strike this thing out, even though she's not going to win the match. Another 4-6. She had a 4-6 in the first game. 4-6-10 in the second game. A 4-6 in this game twice. A nine count for her in the eighth frame. Just been wondering, I wonder if uh, Mother Audsley is going to take the little one behind the woodshed tonight. Well, they have some bowling lanes back there or what? Yes, and I guess because she'll be out practicing. You're kidding, but actually I'll bet she goes out practicing after this match. And get the strikes. Her good hits are not carrying. She has 121 through the eighth. Could bring this one back and then strike it out for 171. And there's her spare in the ninth frame. She's had three splits in this game. Now Marion Matawig in the ninth frame. Has a strike up. Lost over, left the 3610. Jack, the 3610, and that's with the Brunswick pin finder now. You can see how it lights that up clear, plus at the same time that pin finder stays on. This helps the bowler. Sometimes when a pin might be behind another one, why it enables the bowler to know it's there. We'll see how Marion shoots this from the left side of the approach. Wants to cover that 3-6, and she does. So she's spare in the ninth. Now let's see what Marion does in the tenth frame. I don't think we have to just go into pinfall bit right now. I mean, you've concluded that 
Marion is so far out in front. There's one of them in the 10th frame. Giving her 187. You're right. No errors in this match by Marion Ladwig. Just those splits. And the splits all came her way in the first game when she had four of them. No double. Brings us back for 207. This, I think, is apparent, Jack, that when Marion was involved in the first game with those splits, she made what, whatever adjustments and has been able to keep her the next two games clear. And probably this is where experience really comes in, which little Judy didn't have at this particular match. 207 for Marion Ladderwick. Following a 155 and a 202, a 207. 564 for Marion. Judy Audsley in the 10th frame. Jack, I think I did it again. It's 565. Trying to spare in the tenth. I, as I keep playing around with these figures here, Jack, I think it's actually 207 in the last game, and Marion's total would be then 564. And Judy 158. So the youngster just couldn't get going as Marion Ladawig wins it. Marion uh, totaling the match 564 and Judy Odsley a 464. Let's take care of the money right now before chatting with the ladies about the match just concluded. And each week a graduate of the John Robert Power School of Modeling and the Pat Allen Agency here in St. Louis comes along with the money. Gloria Decker is our guest this week. Gloria? How do you do? Uh, Judy, it's been real nice watching you bowl, and you too, Marion, and I'd like to present to you, Judy, this check for $500. It's a real nice game. And for you, Marion, the winner, a check for $1,000. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Gloria. Thank you. And Marion, our congratulations on uh, another victory. Thank you, Jack. Put that in your scrapbook and put the check in the bank. I certainly will. Some more uh, dresses and uh, shoes for the grandchildren, huh? Right. <laughs> And a little one? I don't deserve it. Oh, yeah, you deserve that. You deserve that for the grins when things were going wrong. You deserve at least $500. What was wrong out here? Oh, yeah. Is that what it was? I'm glad to hear you say that because Whitey and I were kicking it around up here. You haven't had many chances in your uh, short and youthful career to appear under such circumstances, have you? No. Huh? And it does make a difference, Marion, huh? Yes, it does. <laughs> it certainly does. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we were both in trouble that first game. Yeah, but you adjusted. You you changed around, got away from those splits. Well, you know that goes from a lot of schooling way back. Whenever get in trouble, whenever you're in trouble, go to angle, and I did. <laughs> Remember that. You've heard it before. Huh? Judy, you're great. You're always nice to be with, and we we're certainly happy that you could have been here uh, on Top Star Bowling. Next time you'll be a winner. I hope so. Huh? Nice going, Judy. Good Thank to see. You. You. Nice to meet your mom here this week too. And Marianne, Always glad to see you. Thank you. I know you've just finished uh, applauding, but how about once again for our two fine performers here? <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed watching the ladies in Top Star Bowling. I know we've had a lot of fun with their presence here. I'm speaking for Whitey Harris. Jack Buck says thanks for your time this time. Till next time, so long. Star Bowling has been presented by Bowling Equipment.
equipment by Brunswick, the number one name in bowling. Top Star Bowling is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress. Thank you.